one of the most brutal dictators ever to rule. One with such a harsh grip on Europe, but one who revolutionised the biggest country on earth. I'm of course talking about Joseph Stalin. Now, Josef Stalin was born into a Georgian family, so he wasn't actually Russian. But Georgia was part of the Russian Empire, so it technically counted back then. But he was born into an Orthodox Christian family. Now, his mother wanted him to go to school, become educated, and become a priest. But things would not turn that way. Now, at a young age, Stalin had contracted smallpox, leaving him with the pockmark face that everyone knows him to have. And throughout his life, he began starting to read the works of Karl Marx and then eventually Vladimir Lenin, which then resulted to him joining an underground society known as the Bolsheviks. Now, Stalin wanted to prove himself in the Bolsheviks. I've... I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to pronounce his Christian name. Uh, yeah. He wanted to prove himself to Lenin. So, he showed his impressive ability to rouse speeches, start riots, and he would even gain money for the cause by robbing banks, shops, anything like that. Ultimately, he would try and escape, use an alias, but then get arrested. In 1917 and 18, he helped with the Russian revolutions, and he became a, a very good general during the Russian Civil War, which we all know who won. Now, when Lenin became overall leader of the Soviet Union, he appointed Leon Trotsky, Stalin's rival, as vice leader but let's just go vice leader of the Soviet Union and appointed Stalin as his general secretary now just before I go on to his general secretary his name Stalin came because he wants to hide his Georgian roots and ev and a few people in the Bolshevik party started throwing around Stalin which in Russian meant man of steel and it fit the title perfectly, so he adopted it. Now, being General Secretary, anyone would think it's another office desk, but Stalin was very quick to notice the potential. He could take people in and out of meetings. He could make them early or late whenever he wanted to. He could throw around ideas so the people that would vote for Stalin and would see him as a good successor to Lenin would be... In, in the meeting, and people who thought Trotsky was a good leader, they would be sent elsewhere. Obviously, with Lenin's death in 1924, then came a power struggle, but Lenin had wrote a testimony saying that he wanted Stalin removed from the Communist Party and Leon Trotsky to be head of the Soviet Union. This obviously, well, this letter fell into Stalin's hands and he had he, he made Trotsky look bad in every way possible. He made him late to Lenin's funeral by giving him a wrong date. He started posting propaganda about him. And he even got to a point where he exiled him to Mexico, where he would live until his untimely death in 1940 by an NKVD assassin. Stalin was now head of... Well, he was now class general secretary of the USSR, and it was his job to bring the Soviet Union up to speed. And he would do that through five, four, uh, five, five, three five-year plans. Ignore the hands. These were punishing. It extended quotas for, for work. If anyone would fall below these quotas on a regular basis, they'd either be shot or arrested. It would... Well, it led to mass famines, killing 5 million. Sources vary. 
But in the end, it turned the Soviet Union into an absolute industrial powerhouse, making it joint superpower with the US. Now, in the 30s, one of his, well, one of his rivals, who was also one of his mates, was killed. Now, many say that Stalin done this because he was a threat to power, but things are still a little iffy on that. But it gave Stalin an excuse to find his killer. First, he started with political advisors, and then he went to the general public. And this would become known as the Great Purge. He purged many political advisors, officers, leaders, and ultimately it killed roughly one million people in the Soviet Union. This would come back to bite him on the arse later. In, in August 1939, Stalin agreed to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, uh, approved by Adolf Hitler, to invade Poland and carve up between them. And this would mean lasting peace for ten years. Stalin was wary about this, but he was alright with it. It meant he could take parts of Europe and stay under the watchful eye of the Nazis. Until, in, on the 22nd of June 1941, Hitler invaded. He sent three million troops in the largest land invasion ever known to man across the Soviet border. While uh, FDR and Churchill told Stalin that an invasion was imminent, Stalin still didn't believe them. Until, obviously, Germany dishonoured the pack, and Stalin went into a state of isolation and locked himself in his quarters for weeks, not speaking to anyone, while the, while the Red Army was being slaughtered. He obviously came out of a state of isolation and took personal control of the Red Army and managed to lead it from the river of the Volga all the way back to the gates of Berlin. Now that Germany was divided, the Cold War had begun and Stalin was not at all ready to um, take on the West, but he knew he could threaten them and bluff. However, during the early 50s, Stalin was planning another purge, this time aimed at Jewish doctors. Well, more specifically, the Jews. But before he could see it out, it led to him having a stroke on the 1st of March 1953. This didn't kill him, but it paralysed the right side of his body. And then, a couple of days later, he awoke for a brief moment, not being able to do anything, until he then died on the 8th of March, 1953. His successor would be a hard-fought one between Leventi Berrier, Georgi Malenkov and Nikita Khrushchev. We all know who came out on top. It was our funny man, Nikita Khrushchev. Stalin's reign over the Soviet Union caused the death of over 20 million Soviets. This was released in Nikita Khrushchev's secret speech, where he denounced what had happened across Stalin's reign. So, that is the life and death of Joseph Stalin. I hope you did enjoy. Let me know what you think about the tyrannical dictator in the comments below. And oh dear, that's a oh god, that's a oh, that's a group of bombers. I should probably man the AA guns. Oh, I'll I'll see you next time.